Hey, what's going on everybody? Bauer Brown back with you. It's been a while since my last video. I apologize. This 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 video in particular should have been done probably a lot sooner. Um, for those of you that use the editor, Giants Editor, you know, on a regular basis, or you're playing Farming Simulator 22, um, you'll know that there was some changes that were made a little while ago. And one of those was the update to Giants Editor version 9.0.3. Um, as you can see on my screen right now, we're looking at the change log for the new version. And the reason I wanted to get this video out there um, is mostly because this tutorial series is geared for people that are just starting out with the, uh, with the editor. And there are some things that have been changed, so I want to make sure I go over those things so you know that those, those changes have been made and these options you know, are available to you within the editor, okay? Um, some of you guys may know that this stuff, you know, already know about, you know, these changes, and, and maybe you don't. Um, so anyhow, that's what this video is geared towards. Like I said, it should have been done a while ago, uh, but my videos right now are, are very slow in between. Um, I assure you that by the new year, you know, or sometime shortly after the new year, uh, we'll be back up to weekly videos and things will be will be rolling right along. Um, but right now in the next, you know, the re remaining few months up until the new year, things are going to be kind of slow. Um, it's just life and circumstances kind of work out that way for me right now. Um, but anyhow, I'll do the best that I can for you in between. And right now that's going to be going over these few changes that have been made to, uh, the Giants editor 9.0.3. Okay. So really quick, um, I'm going to read over the actual change log. Um, you can find this change log if you want to read it yourself. Um, and it's very good to do for any version of the Giants editor that just comes out when they update things. You want to have a look at it. You go into your program files, find your Giant Softwares folder, and uh, then go ahead and find the folder that for that version of the editor, Giants Editor 9.0.3. So like I said, it's in your programs file, Giant Software, and then look for that version of the editor. Look for that folder. And then in there, you'll find the README. In the README, that's where you're going to find the change log. Um, it's is not, I just want to stress that it's not in your app data folder. Um, so don't go looking there because I know some people, you know, we've been over this in one of the videos that, you know, there are things that you can find in your app data folder you know, concerning a Giants editor. Um, but this this particular thing, this uh, README file and the change log is not there. This one's going to be in your programs file, Giant Software, and then in a folder with the editor number itself. Okay, um, so coming back to the change log, uh, going over this real quick for 9.0.3, uh, they added support for Farming Simulator 22 patch 1.6, um, which is great because that was the, uh, the patch was one of the newer updates, you know, for Giants Editor and for Farming Simulator 22 itself, I'm sorry. Um, the creating and switching spline control points can now be done if you, if just the spline is selected, Never really had an issue with this. I did notice it, but it was never really an issue for me. Um, I just worked around it. Not a problem. Um, but anyhow, that's one of the changes. Uh, fixed crash when deleting a camera and save. Again, not really an issue for me, but okay, it's been changed. Fixed shortcuts handling. I guess you were unable to type a letter when it was binded to a shortcut, uh, detecting shortcuts in the wrong places. Added note node to play sticky notes in a scene. This one's great. You guys are going to use this a lot. I personally use it very often. It's very handy. And I will show you how to do this quickly once we're done with this uh, with this change log. Uh, terrain edit replace value is no longer updated when copying parameters with control R in terrain paint mode. Um, this is another thing that I have noticed and it really wasn't an issue for me. Uh, added option to hide foliage which I guess is great if you need to hide your foliage. I never really personally had the need, but you never know when the need will arise. Um, so now that option is available. Fixed geometry tangents after freeze transform. Properly reload materials instead of keeping the existing materials when reloading in I3D. And added UI creation functions to a script. So in a nutshell, that's, that's the entire change log um, for the new version 9.0.3. Um, so with that being said, let's jump over to the editor and have a look at some of these things. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to look at uh, the hiding the foliage part. Okay, now normally when, <clears throat> when, normally when you want to hide or show anything, you can right click on, on the screen in your viewport. You go down to show and you would, you would pick, you know, whatever it is out of that list. 
And this is where I would normally expect to see foliage. You know, it should show up right here under occluders, um, but it's not there. Um, so it's not that it's it's not there. I think the developers just, well, it's not there in this right-click list. It's that the developers somehow, you know, I guess they forgot to add it to the right-click list. Um, so instead, you have to go up to view, go down the show, and right there is foliage underneath occluders, just like I thought it would be. So if we unclick that, there you go, your foliage just appeared, just disappeared. Um, now this only affects like your grass, your flowers, weeds, stuff like that. Um, it does not affect the trees. If you want your trees to disappear, you can pretty much just do those individually, or you can just hide the entire transform group that these trees are sitting in, okay? Um, so like I said, it doesn't affect the trees, just grass and you know, foliage, basically. So again, if you want to put that back on, you go up to view go down the show and click foliage and there you are um, again it's not in the right click list it, normally you'd be able to get there from a right click and hopefully somewhere down the line the developers will realize that they forgot to put that in there and that will be corrected okay the next thing on the list was adding notes this one i love this this is great okay so um let's see here here, I got a hole here in this ground, okay? So I'm going to put a note here. I just noticed it while I was working that, wow, that's, that's a pretty decent sized hole. I'm going to get rid of that, but I don't have time to do it right now. So I'm going to leave myself a note that says, hey, take care of that hole. Um, so let's go up to create, go down to note, and then I can pick a color for my note. You know, green, yellow, orange, pinkish, red, whatever that is, purple and blue. Um, if you have a preference for a color, your favorite color, you can go ahead and pick that. Or maybe you have a uh, some kind of color scheme going on where, you know, the colors mean something. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to pick green. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to up up here and it's uh, right above where I picked the color. I can put what my note says. And uh, let's put fix hole. Okay. So fix hole. And we will rename, rename the note so I know it. So give it a meaningful name so I know what the heck that note is all about. Okay, now, <clears throat> with my notes, personally, what I do... Okay, let's, before I go there, anyhow, let's hit Control-B, and we'll put that right on top of... Uh, place that right on top of the hole. Okay, now I'm going to head off to a different area of the map, and I'm going to start working on something different. Like I said, I just want to leave that note because I can't get to the hole right now, but later on I want to make sure I remember to fix it. Um, now your notes, you know, if you're using them diligently... you they'll start to add up. You might have 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 different notes. Uh, so what I end up doing is I end up putting these in their own transform group and just name that notes. All right. Nothing fancy about the name, just notes. Okay. So now that I'm on a different area of the map and I have a hundred different notes in there, I know there's only one in there now, but let's pretend there's a hundred of them in there. Um, when I click on, on, on the note itself, I, I have no clue where in the map you know, this note is, what are they talking about? Um, so once you have that highlighted, just hit F and then there you go. It brings you right directly to where that note is. And that goes with any object, any single object that you have in your scene graph. Um, for example, like American Elm stage one that I just highlighted, there's thousands of trees on this map that could be any one of them. And a quick way to find out which one it is, is to highlight it in the scene graph, hit F and then there you go. Okay, so back myself out, and that is the tree that I had chose out of the scene graph. Alrighty, um, and like I said, that works with just about everything. So again, so I want to highlight my note, I'll hit F, it'll bring me right there is my note. Um, you can delete your note if you need to, you can fix what the note says, you can change the colors of the note if you also want to do that. Um, pretty nice to have, it's a very, very handy feature. Okay, so those were the two important things that, or the two notable things that were in the change log that I wanted to go over because those are the things that, you know, you're really going to use the most. Um, one thing that I did notice is there's been a change that was not in the change log. Now, for those of you who have been following this tutorial right now, you should know that, uh, you should know about the erosion tool um, because we did go over that in one of the videos on how to work with erosion. If you remember thermal erosion and you remember uh, <clears throat> hydraulic erosion. So basically heat and water, the two, two ways you can do with erosion. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my right mouse button and I'm going to remap that to erosion and then I'm going to go down to the erosion tab itself and if you remember anything about the older versions or if you want to go back and, and look at the older version, you'll notice that this is different. Now you have a, 
now now you have settings for raindrops, iterations, erosion rate, deposition rate, friction, and speed. Okay, this is very different from the way the erosion tool used to work. And one of the ways, just one of the ways that I used to use erosion is like say like this uh this little roadway that I have here, this little path. Um in, in normally in life, especially like in a farmer's field, um if you're traveling down a path, it's not super duper smooth. It's just not. You know, it's been rained on. It's 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 had erosion. You know, it's going to be bumpy. It's going to have you know. It, you want to you want to use it to mimic real life, and that's the way that I used to use this tool. Now, the one thing I'll warn you against is that it, on a smaller scale, on a smaller brush size, this is super touchy. You can see by my settings here that I have these set down into the thousands almost, right? And some of them, you know, some of them not so much. Um, the one thing that's nice is, like, say, look at raindrops. Let's put this on five, okay? Now, like I was just saying to you, on a smaller brush size, when, if I just tap the button, I'm good. Now, you'll see these blue arrows show up. Those are the raindrops themselves, okay? Now, if I hold this in, it, it's it's really touchy. I mean, it really, it, it really affects the land surface there. Um, so you really want to just keep it in mind because you want to be careful with it. Um, the way the tool, I don't know if it's really, I mean, I, I don't want to say it's meant to be used this way because in my opinion, it's meant to be used. However, you could think of using it basically, um, but it, to affect the larger area. So let's go back and we'll change the raindrops, right? To Let's change that to, actually, let's change that to 25. Keep the iterations on three and we're going to increase the brush size so we can uh, affect the bigger area. Okay, now, now you see when I'm holding the button in, see how it's mimicking rain? See how those those blue arrows, the raindrops are just kind of, see how they're moving all over the place? Because it's mimicking rain. All right, so as you go along, you can kind of kind of just cover a bigger area and, and this will keep things a little, to me, it'll make it a little interesting. It, it'll make it so not so flat. And if you're careful with your numbers here, um, you won't affect the land surface so much that it's not workable. You know, you'll you'll have bumps where you should have bumps, and you know it it like I said, it'll mimic real life. It's you know, especially if you're on a hill here, and it's gonna mimic like you know how water would you know run down a hill or. Um, but that's how I personally use the tool. Um, like I said, I used to use it a lot on just pathways and stuff because more more often than not, you want to keep your fields at least fairly flat. Um, they don't have to be super duper flat, uh, but fairly flat because, you know, if, if they're too bumpy or they're, or they're too pitted, you will run into some issues along the way when you're working your field. So keep it fairly flat. Um, but all your driving surfaces and stuff like that, um, I do like to, uh, you know, add some bumps and, and make them a little more realistic. But like I said, yeah, I mean, you can see just by tapping that button, you know, how big of an impact that made. Um, so if you're going to have your brush size down smaller, just make sure to keep your raindrops down smaller as well. And, you know, one, two, or three is even okay. And then uh, if you need to, just give it a few taps and and there you go. And that's that's how you can affect a, a smaller surface. But again, as you get the you know, increase the brain, you know, the uh, if you increase your brush size, um, three raindrops really isn't going to be a lot. So you want to you want to increase that as well. You know, and you can even move that up to fifty. Um, or more. Okay, and we kind of go over this real quick. You know, nothing crazy, just enough that, you know, as you're driving through the field in your tractor, you know, you want that to feel, you know, realistic as well. You know, when, when have you ever driven through a cornfield and it was a smooth ride? Just, it doesn't happen. Um, so I'll just go over it real quick and let, you know, let the erosion, you know, mimic erosion and, and then that's it. You know, that's, that's how we use this tool. Alrighty, but I uh, just wanted to go over that because that was a notable difference in this version of the editor that was not included in the changelog. Um, so go ahead and play around with it. Um, like I said, to get used to it, it's touchy, but to get used to it, and, and it does work, seems to me that it works a lot better. Um, so you're going to have to go in and readjust some of your settings, like, you know, turn them all the way down, turn them all the way up, see what kind of effect it has, and that's probably the best way to learn how to use a tool. Okay, so those were all the changes that I wanted to go over for the new version of Giants Editor 9.0.3. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I am Bower Brown, and I'll see you on the next one.